as today is International Podcast Day, we're going to release four episodes on one day to celebrate that fact, all recorded at Leeds Digital Festival. This episode is with Tread CEO Will Smith. Tread is a new card that tracks the carbon footprint you are creating with every purchase and then helps you to offset it. This is Tech Talks, your twice weekly technology podcast celebrating International Podcast Day with myself, David Savage, powered by the Harvey Nash Group, where we talk to leaders from across the industry and bring you a bit of news. I normally open these podcasts by saying joining me today, but given that we've released four episodes on one day, I'm not going to say that because it's like people people could be dipping in and out of different podcasts today. I'm not even sure how to number them. But joining me on this particular edition of the podcast that you are listening to right now is Hannah. Hi, everyone. Wow, you sound enthusiastic <laughs> and not scared in the slightest. <laughs> It's like a horrible weather outside and I've gone very autumnal vibes. So, yeah. You have, you're wearing a hat and you're indoors. It is freezing today. So, yeah. Is it? It's very chilly. Well, obviously you're in a different part of the country to me, so I, I don't know why I'm kind of questioning it. <laughs> it's yeah. quite possible that it's different to where you are. So yeah, but no, it's... um. This is a very British thing to do on a podcast to talk about the weather. Oh, it's boring. I'm it's- sure I don't know how we have any listeners in America because I talk about the weather far too often. Maybe they think it's very cute. That they obviously Brit skip talking. through it, don't they? But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they listen to it and they get oh, they're talking about the weather again. Uh, <laughs> we'll anyway, stop yes. about weather, but yeah. You know, you know what sunshine and showers does particularly well. What? Grows plants. <gasps> Oh my gosh, this is such a speed segue. <laughs> <laughs> Off the top of my head. Right, today's, today's or not today's, because there's four today's, but this edition is all about tread. Uh, tread are offsetting your spend, uh, looking at the carbon footprint that you leave behind when you purchase things. Uh, we'll hand over to Will Smith, who's the co-founder and CEO. He'll explain that far better than I just did. And then myself and Hannah will share some thoughts on it afterwards. So today I'm talking to Will. Uh, Will, thanks for giving up some time at the end of your day because it's 20 to 6. It's the graveyard shift. Yeah, on a Thursday, <laughs> which Thursdays are kind of the new Friday, so this would be when you're kind of out having a nice time. So Yeah, no problem. Well, it's great to be here. And your dog, what, what is your dog's name? <laughs> so the dog um, is a golden retriever. She's called Mayo. Ten months old. I love mayonnaise, and so therefore I was like, I oh, actually, let's call her that. Yeah, she's 10 months old. She's the office dog. She stays in here all the time. I think she's she's particularly <laughs> perturbed by the fact that she's been dragged back into the office. For this. Honestly, we just went for a walk before this. She's lying out, closed her eyes. She's a bit of shut eye. Yeah, she's great. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it keeps everyone amused at work. A nice smiling, like, if you're stressed at work, there's nothing more stress-free than a dog. Even a 10-month... A puppy. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. So look, who are Tread? Tread. So we are trying to make money work for people and the planet. Um, we're actually starting with daily spending, so debit cards. Like, how do you buy your stuff, or how do you buy things every single day? Mm-hmm. We do two really unique things, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to tie in both the financial world and sustainability, so both of those two things. Um, what does that actually mean? Is It's a debit card. You use it like a Monzo, a Starling, a Barclays, whatever it is. Um, but we plant trees every time you spend, so yep. we use some of the revenue generated from cards and basically funnel it into reforestation projects. Um, just, and forgive me, this is a naive question, yeah. but there, there are some debates online where people kind of go, oh, a brand's ethical because it plants trees. Oh, well, planting trees is just kind of sugarcoating, right? It's, it's a really good question. So what most people don't realise is every time you pay for something with a credit card or a debit card, there's basically money transferred in the background to the people who issue the cards, which are people like us. What we're doing is just redistributing that into tree planting. Eventually we want to get to the position where it's not just tree planting, it's solar panels, it's community-based projects. And so whatever you want it to go towards, you can put it towards. Um, and so that's kind of the first thing, just making sure that you know, it's not greenwashing, it is actually just sustainable yeah. through and through. Um, the second kind of key thing is that every time you buy something, it has an environmental impact, whether it is coffees, you know, weekly groceries, gym membership, whatever it is. So we've developed some tech to tell you what that impact is. What it means is that like, every time you buy a Costa coffee or whatever it is, um, not only do you help reforest the planet, but we can tell you where else you can buy products. We can give you tips and tricks, how to be slightly more um, 
sustainable in your purchasing. So how did you come up with this idea? Because it was an idea that you had at university, right? So, slightly, so I met my co-founder, you met your co-founder at, at university. Right, okay. Um, the idea actually came about, so I was sat in a restaurant, it was up in Glasgow, eating the dinner, I had a Diet Coke, um, mm. came to the table and had a, little, like, a tiny plastic drawer, no bigger than like your finger. And so the person I was with was, why have you got a plastic straw? You know, it's, it has a massive impact on the planet. And that just, you know, had a bit of a discussion around what, what is worse for the planet in terms of, you know, what was on the table. So it was not just the straw, it was the food. They flew from London to Glasgow that morning because, and, and, and that really yeah. sparked the debate. Is it, It's really easy and people really want to do some... <laughs> and that <laughs> proves the point. <laughs> now, this is good. This is good. I like... I, shows the listeners that this is... I don't know where, what she's barking at. Um, but yeah, the key, the key thing for us was... How do you make it really easy for people to know what they should be focusing on? Yeah. And it's different from everyone. You know, at the time I was getting the train quite a lot because I was going to and from a place of work. Mm. Other people, you know, their meat consumption might be more, sometimes it might be cars, and everyone is different. And so that was the whole synthesis of the idea was how do we give that to someone in a really easy format? Um, then we basically, there's a whole host of iteration about how that would actually work as a product. Um, how do you even start? to go about looking at, you know, because people spend money on all sorts of things. So trying to actually measure the environmental impact of all of those transactions can't be an easy job. It, it is, it's tricky, and there will always be more work to be done. So like, because we are setting the sort of direction for the industry, it gives us the luxury, if it is a luxury, of setting that direction, mm. but also it's not the luxury because we have to set the direction. Um, the way that we actually do it at the moment is, you buy something, let's use an example of, um, you buy something in Tesco's, you buy something at EasyJet, and you buy something at Shell, like petrol. So what we do is, the first thing we do is categorise that. Tesco's is groceries, EasyJet is flights, Shell is petrol. What you can then do from that is, you can put an estimate based on the value of the transaction and where you bought it. That gives us like the first level of, uh, of um, granularity. What you can then do is go into another two levels, so like, um, personal profiles is the other big one. So if you've bought te- uh, groceries, are you a vegan, are you a meat eater? If you drive a car, is it electric, is it petrol, etc. And from that you can then go to like another level of detail. The next one after that is again vendors. So was it groceries at Tesco's versus Aldi versus Waitrose, etc. And so <clears throat> it, it's like this ever-evolving beast. What we're really conscious of is it has to be really easy for a customer yeah. because no, we've asked a lot of people, and no one really wants to take pictures of receipts. It's pre- pretty t- like time consuming. And so it's how do we give people enough information to make it directionally correct without it being too detailed. And this is a card? A debit card, yes. A debit card, a physical debit card. Mm, a physical, well, so it's so actually a really good question. It's a physical debit card, but in this day and age, you don't need physical debit card. Well, exactly. I mean, I was going to ask, because I've, I've got Monzo and I've got yep. virtual cards, or I think with Revolut, but certainly virtual cards are mm. increasingly a thing. Mm. And is this something then that's additional to Barclays, your main bank, your legacy bank, or Monzo if you're, if you're using one of the fintechs, or is it something that you can use on one of those accounts? Really good question. So at the moment, we found that a lot of people want a slightly more, a greener version of a Monzo, and so that's right. basically what we started with. We actually started with open banking, which was like probably a year ago, and then transitioned into debit cards. And we found it was a huge opportunity that if you wanted to spend in a more ethical way, or more sustainable way, I think it's really more accurate. So yeah, at the moment, it's a debit card in itself. So the idea would be, instead of using your Monzo, or your Revolut, or your whatever other ones there are, um, you would then transfer across to a Tread card. But at the moment, it would be um, sort of aiming to get people like spending like groceries, weekly shopping, etc. But we want to transition into we are the card that people use. Yeah. Um, there is a whole inward discussion around curves and amazing things for how to get people through spending through a curve card, but not necessarily having a curve account. So it's where you link your existing card to. Yeah, I know we've had Cheshire on the podcast. Uh, yeah, and they're, and they're doing some like, yeah. they're doing some awesome things like, and, and there are definitely lessons for us to be learned because the thing that we do at the moment is we'd be really naive to think that everyone's going to spend every penny on our tread card. Yeah. And so to give people like a full view of their carbon footprint, we let them connect it by open banking as well. And so that, that, but it, 
because people spend on their monza like petty not petty cash but like their daily spending rather than like rent mortgages yes. loans etc so we're really conscious of that and you're probably tapping well you are tapping into a market that's already fairly flexible mm. they're happy to download an app and, to, and you can switch quite easily because i suppose i'm typical of this mortgage comes out of barclays but i use monzo day to day and are you tapping into that idea, I suppose, then? You, you know, you said that you wanted to be that card of choice. Mm. In the same way that Monzo initially was um, that coral card, it was almost a cachet <laughs> thing. coral card. But no, but you know, if you're saying like, you know, this could be something for the vegan community, perhaps would align to what you're talking mm. about, where they can go, ah, oh, yeah, tread is a card that gets our values, gets our ethos. Yeah, it's exactly that. So... We're sort of tapping into the, we would like to replace that card. Now, ultimately, we want to replace that card um, in people's wallets. What that looks like and where it is, is actually, so there are as many people right now Googling for a green bank as there are mobile bank. And so if you're like, if you put that into perspective, like mobile banking is Revolut, Starling, Monzo, Tide, Moneys, etc., etc., all doing all amazing things, but none of them are in that green bank space. And so that's basically the opportunity that we're tapping into. Um, but yeah, you're right, I spend stuff on, my mortgage comes out at Barclays, I have credit cards that I buy really high value stuff on if I buy a holiday or something. Yeah. Because um, it's insured. And so we'd, we'd be naive to think that people will transfer all their spending. Hence we do the open banking. But that's not the way of many consumers do. So yeah. how do you go about uh, acquiring users? You know, you're a new brand, you're growing, yeah. you're, but you're, you know, you're, we're just going out of the, the pandemic. Um, how do you how do you get the message out there? <laughs> a lot a lot of various ways. This podcast, um, you know, it's a great way to get um, just to like spread the word of what we're doing, how we came about, and kind of where where we're going. The other big channels are like digital. So there's a digital strategy that we're doing. It's ads. It's making sure that people actually know we exist and call to actions, all that kind of stuff. We're also then planning um, quite, quite a lot of um, billboard campaigns. You know, the campaigns that sit, sit alongside that. So it's not just your direct to consumer ads, it's then a sort of slightly wider, wider reach. We're also really lucky that because we're based in Leeds, there are some amazing people in Leeds that sort of like, not necessarily helping, but there's a really communi- a good community feel that oh, we're all based in Leeds, we should all help each other out because it's not another London startup. And you, you mentioned as well that you, you had a marketplace kind of approach, mm. perhaps in partnership. And that was interesting because that reminded me of uh, Starling Bank and Pension B and others had a marketplace idea, mm-hmm. which was quite a good way of, of cross-pollinating users. Exactly. So we know what you buy because you know every time you buy on the card, we can see that information. It's private to you, so we don't actually have access to it. But what we do do is, because we know where you're spending and we have a marketplace, which are things like Octopus Energy, um, so it's like renewable energy, We've got people like Honest Mobile who are like a, an alternative to, to your phone provider. And so all of these different um, partners give you the opportunity to make better decisions or like more sustainable decisions. Because mm-hmm. that's the whole thing is it's, we're trying to remove the barrier for people to live a greener life. And whether that's from telling you what the impact you have is, just turning some of the money that you don't normally see into tree planting, or it's marketplaces. We also do um, some around offsetting as well, like carbon offsetting. Um, but yes, yeah, it's a marketplace. I think we've got 28 providers now. Um, curated from fashion through lifestyle through um, utilities etc. So we mentioned that we're we're in Leeds. It is Leeds Digital uh, Festival yep. at the moment. In the middle of it, um, what what does it mean to you to be in Leeds? Because you know, I, I sat down with Stuart Park earlier today. He was talking about the fact that this is a hotbed of talent, um, and I do kind of feel like there's this renewed opportunity with with the pandemic for people to really keep hold of, you know, the undoubted kind of student populations that Leeds and Manchester and places like that have and the proximity of those cities, actually, they feel closer if you only have to be somewhere for two days a week. But what does that mean for a startup? <laughs> Great question. So we had the choice when we set up Leeds, London, we were kind of the two logicals. I actually grew up in Yorkshire and we were like, I can have a dog and all this kind of stuff. And I, I do a lot of like outside of... And being a proud, proud Yorkshire, <laughs> no one else will ever do. <laughs> So I, so I do a lot, of, and it's perfect for me. I do a lot of cycling outside of work and stuff yeah. like that. And so being close to the Dales is awesome. In terms of like the actual business side of it, there is amazing talent. There are some amazing companies that are relocating here. Skybet's just down the road. Like it has an amazing culture. It's got like a lot that they can teach us. You've got 
the Leeds Tech Fest, you've got a lot of like um, universities for good talent. And so all the kind of stars are aligning. You just need the right businesses to keep people here. Because um, traditionally, you know, London, everyone would go out of university and move down. Whereas now it's, we're trying to give people an opportunity to stay. And we're seeing like an amazing amount. We're actually hiring quite a lot of graduates at the moment to just basically keep the talent coming through. Do you think it, it matters so much now about those businesses being here? Again, so, so we do two days a week out of the office mm. and three days a week in the office. Um, we found that it's, like, there is a benefit to being completely remote. You can hire anywhere. You're not, you, know, you don't have to have people based in the area. But you miss the team that, you know, you've all sat in this room here. So we're in the Tread office now. Um, you miss the cross-pollination of everyone talking, just hearing random conversations. And so we are hell-bent and that's the right model. Um, we are having, like, people also are looking for jobs in London. So being based in Leeds, but jobs in London because they are remote. Um, which, again, proves challenges for us because being a Leeds-based firm and being a London-based firm, there are slightly different things in terms of costs and what that looks like. Um, so, yeah. Interesting challenges. Yeah. So what's, yeah. What's, what's ahead of you? Kind of, you know, you're a startup and, and we're coming out of the pandemic, so I imagine it's, it's difficult to know exactly what the next year looks like, but kind of three to six <laughs> months and, and the product, what, what are your kind of ambitions? Three to six months, great. <laughs> so in the next three months, the, the focus for us is launching. So actually pre-launch now, we're about... Well, the first cards arrived. I've literally got a wallet now. The first cards arrived today, um, and so that's us like testing, spending, making sure the controls work. Because from a like fraud perspective, that's a whole different kettle of fish. So that's the that's a key focus for us right now. Um, we've got a lot of exciting partnerships to announce in the next three or four weeks. And fortunately, that's all I can say. But like, it, it, there's been a lot of work behind the scenes to get that all ready. Transitioning to the next three to six months, it's making sure the product works, making sure people like the product. The same with everyone. Getting that right product market fit, I think, is the, the thing for us to do. It's then driving acquisition. So, how do we go from a team of what are we now? Thirteen people, no customers. We have a, we have a waiting list, obviously, but then from that to you know twenty, fifty thousand people. You know, setting us up for success. We're doing lots of tests, lots of testing, lots of learning. What do people like? What do people not like? Yeah. Um, and what's engaging people? I think is the kind of key thing for us now. Look, Will, it's been a pleasure to speak to you. Um, I think it's super interesting. It is very topical. Uh, I mean, I hosted a panel yesterday in London about AI and sustainability was the topic that dominated. So it's, yeah, it's, I it's, think it's, if you can tap into that, then, then there's definitely something there. It's a, it's, a, it's a really exciting space to be in. But FinTech in itself is the hot, most talked about topic. Yeah. Combining that with sustainability, it's kind of like this. We sit really nicely in the middle of both of them. And there's one last thing you mentioned as a waiting list, but if someone is interested in joining that list, <laughs> yeah, the subtle plug. Um, the website is www.tread, so that's T R E D dot uh, one D. Um, one D, one E, um, yeah, and you can sign up there. Perfect. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you so much. Right. Do you have Monzo or Evolu or anything else? You probably have Monzo. I don't have Starling because I thought okay. the advert was so cool with all the. What well, the one with the shed? Is there one with a shed? I just was thinking with all the birds. Have I got the right? Yes, it's, it's, it's all the sheds take off and people doing small business in their sheds and they're, I'm sure they're, it's, it's the same one, isn't it? Oh, okay. This is a great plug for Starling. I'm sure Trent's yeah. thrilled about this. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the music from Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. I'm, yeah, gonna, anyway, I'm just going to agree. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it, no, in a way it is kind of a great plug for Tread, right? Because yep. it's not like at the minute you can have a tread card because as Will ably kind of uh, talks about, they are they are pre-launch at the moment, and he has only just got his hands on the on the first card. So um, no, I you know if you have Monzo or Starling or whatever else, you may well be susceptible to trying a new banking app, and therefore actually. You know, you and I are the kind of customers that they probably want to be targeting rather than someone who's never thought, let's download a, a banking app and give it a go. Yeah, I think there's such a need for it in the market at the moment. I'm definitely more conscious about it. I think I read a thing the other week that said like a quarter of my gen, I don't even know which gen I am, but my your gen, you're depressingly your gen Z. <laughs> I like 
are like 25 or more than that. I think it's like 36% of they consider not having children because of the sustainability or, yeah, the, like the carbon damage that it can do. I keep saying carbon instead of being like environmental damage. Um well, I, I've yeah. seen and read a lot of people who say things like, why would you want to have children into a world where they're going to be fighting over crops and water and stuff? And it's like, well, that's that's faintly dystopian. Okay, fine. Maybe you've watched too much science fiction. But there is... Like, I, I, <laughs> then you turn around and go, it's like Tuesday morning. Like, <laughs> 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 okay, this is a bit full on. But no, I get it. And yeah, I do think there's definitely a need for it. So, yeah. I, I think that there is... Undeniably, right now there is a. It is hot. That's the probably the wrong word to phrase for greenhouse gases and, and global warming, or maybe it's perfect. But it's a topic that people want to talk about, and it's fashionable. And I'm not saying that it's flaky or that it's, you know. But people right now are very interested. I'm just hoping it's not a fad. I think that's what I'm trying to get a trend. at. Trend. Yeah, it's not going to be like, oh, this is really trendy at the moment. Let's all get right now. It is really cool to talk about it in the same way that it's. It felt like it was really cool to talk about mental health on Instagram about a year ago. Lots of influencers talked about mental health, and I think that that's subsided a bit. But I hope that it's left behind a very mature conversation of we can actually talk about it a bit more. But it doesn't feel quite as cool as it did Mm. maybe a year ago. It's the legacy, I think, that comes along with talking about really important stuff. I think it's just yeah. more people being aware that they really need to have these serious conversations, just the same as you're saying about mental health. Whenever In the episode, though, you mentioned about, obviously, it being really like the hot topic. Mm. <laughs> uh, the A&I. A&I? Yeah. Y. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I, I, I was moderating a 40-minute panel, I would say 15 minutes. Uh and, and normally I'll, when I'm running a panel, I'll go, right, let's talk about X, Y, and Z, and then we'll go out to the audience. And there was like one or two questions. <laughs> let's talk about this, go out to the audience. And then sustainability, loads of questions. Everyone like, mm-hmm. okay, let's talk about sustainability and AI um, or sustainability and data. Um, and it was obvious that, that people cared and wanted to know what, what could be done yeah. um and i think there's an i think there is all, people are waking up to the in, to the invisible impact mm. that we all create on the planet it's all like it's all very well saying cowspiracy seaspiracy aren't planes bad yada 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 yeah yeah because they're very visible they're very you know they're, they're 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 very obvious targets but if you go on tread's website <clears throat> it talks about the fact that every single time you buy a coffee there is a there is an impact. It's 0.85 kilograms for the average cup of coffee. That's the amount of carbon that it emits, right? What? Just the actual transaction? Yeah. That's crazy. You see, you Think about the amount of coffee that, that is bought. I buy coffee. Oh, I, I quite often buy coffee twice a day from a shop. But that's every single transaction. That's crazy. Yeah. It, it, Think about it. There is... There is this invisible mountain of emission that is kind of keying up. And I'm now, look, I'm not saying that people shouldn't go out and buy coffee, but there is an awareness, isn't there? That's such a weird link to it. Ban coffee. That's the only <laughs> I'm, I'm like, definitely not saying that. Yeah, you've lost me. <laughs> I'm not saying that. But it does make you just think about how you can maybe change your behaviours to reduce your impact. Yeah. Um I mean, th- they talk very uh, strongly on the website about the impact of of choosing to use your car over public transport. Um, and in the pandemic, the usage of cars has obviously gone up because people have been understandably nervous about getting on public transport. Yeah. But then- and so that that is a conversation topic where you can really dive into some detail and go, oh, hang on a minute. I think there's, you know as you say in the episode and what, you know, Will was saying as well, that there's so many different categories and then you can go into subcategories of those categories and then you can go into more detail. And I think everybody, it's not about putting a label on so many different things. I think it's just everybody trying to do a small part because it's more, yeah. of the, you know, and that's where it's going to make the most impact instead of being like, I have to be so extreme and I have to go to all of these things and label myself as this, that and the other just making one step like this, which, you know, or having the knowledge for it, which I didn't know before, 
and a lot of other people probably wouldn't have known the impact. Well, it, mod- it moderates your behaviour, right? You said, you made the really good point, what's the carbon emission of sending out all these cards? It was almost like, well, why do they need to send out cards? And I don't think that's a silly question. But the one thing I do think is that if you're in a shop and you open up your wallet and you see the trade card, mm. it will make you think. It's a reminder, yeah. In the same way that I wear a Fitbit and therefore if I don't do exercise, it's like, well, that's a bit silly. It's almost like wearing a fitness tracker kind of makes you go, probably should use it. <laughs> yeah, fair. They do go hand in hand, don't they? It's kind of like, yeah, like if you've got it in your wallet and it's there, mm-hmm. I think you're more likely to be con- have that that silent manager in the background, the thing that kind of makes you constantly go, oh, hang on, right. What, what you know, th- these choices I'm making, could I be slightly smarter? Mm-hmm. Not necessarily overhaul your lifestyle, but just be a little bit more conscious about one or two things that might make a small difference. And if everyone does that, then that can add up to a much bigger, you know. Yeah. It's... We're not going to stop going on holiday and using tra- uh, using <laughs> using planes. Yeah. But we might make all make small choices that have a big impact. Yeah, I think that way of thinking that it could have a bigger impact of being a constant reminder, I think that's, yeah, quite interesting in itself. I think Will might like that idea of being like every time that you see it you might take a more conscious or ethical or environmental decision on your purchase of what you're doing or I think it yeah you might you know step onto a bus or might be filling up for fuel which is a hot topic at the moment but <laughs> you might then get your card out and then be like oh do I actually need to do this or can I walk it or can I get the train or can I get one of these fancy electric bikes or yeah, it might be a different way to challenge every decision that you are making in the future. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, now feels like such an opportune moment, doesn't it? Like a lot of people were talking about, are we going to, are we going to see major changes? Like, a, a, you know, are we going to have a green recovery from, from COVID? Uh, and there was that period, wasn't there, where all the planes stopped and, and yeah. carbon emissions dropped. And, and then and dolphins stopped. came out of the sea and there was great the <laughs> Um, but on a serious front, like yeah, people people have gone. Oh, but it's we've lost all of that ground. But I don't think we have, because what we're now seeing in places like London is they are heading, they are pushing on with the pedestrianisation of, of Oxford Street, which has been talked about since the nineteen eighties, and I don't think would have happened without the pandemic. Mm. And there are changes that I think we made this big leap forward, and then we took quite a few steps backwards Mm -hmm. closer to where we were but in attitude and momentum perhaps not I think also the not commercial aspect but maybe just the change in the consumer knowledge around it Mm. I think that's what's really pushed it forward I think that people are waking up to more being like there's a business opportunity here not just let's do it because it feels good because that actually for the decision makers, which unfortunately are the people, you know, that are going to be thinking about the money, how that can impact. So now it goes hand in hand. So it's kind of nothing really stops. Yeah, and that's a good point. Like whether you like it or not, like people have talked about inclusion and diversity for a very, very long time, but it wasn't until it started to make an impact on business that people started to do stuff. Now that might be cynical, but at the same time, it is a driver for change. And unfortunately, whether you like it or not, most organisations are accountable to shareholders, not to ethical concerns um but if people's habits change and people stop buying from organizations because they don't like what they stand for or they stop making purchases because they think they're bad for the planets they stop they stop buying tops that cost three pounds and wearing them once and throwing them away but but going to thrift stores or or paying a little bit more for quality that'll last then that'll have an impact on the industry as a whole and you'll stop seeing as many very cheap bits of clothing that are made without any kind of thought of their their kind of wear produced. But that having an impact on the banking and the way that we mm. think about our finances is a completely new way. Oh yeah, totally. It. Like it's a like I think it, you know, it has really started with all the information about clothing, but it moving to finances and tread with along along with that is yeah, exciting. Yeah. It's happening. Yeah, exactly. And and like Will said, they're in this really sweet spot between 
fintech and uh, yeah. and environmental. You thought it was quite interesting what he had to say about Leeds. I just hadn't really thought about it. Him saying about it being an option. It's you know whenever he said about you graduate and then you move to London, I was like, yep, that's pretty much just what is the done thing for most graduates, and it's pretty much I don't know. 85% of the people that I know that's what happened to them but you know them saying that there's so much development and business opportunities in Leeds it's exciting yeah I mean I wouldn't disagree with you like I was very much I'm not generation Z as anyone everyone knows <laughs> I'm very much in the my friendship group all moved to London because it's just what you did and it's where opportunities yeah. were and I, I quite liked the idea of moving back to Newcastle, but there weren't any employment opportunities for me as Definitely. far as I could tell. But you're in this interesting place, right? Because you've got a role that it's not really ties to any one particular place all of a sudden. Like you're from Birmingham. Do you want to stay in Birmingham? <laughs> you you could theoretically live anywhere in a 200 mile radius, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think the option's there just to be it's it's so different. I think with the skills shortages for certain, yeah, for certain jobs, you literally have to be any, like you can be anywhere. Like there's no restrictions for that. I don't know. It just depends on why you're motivated to move to a certain place. But, you know, him saying what that. What are you looking for? Yeah. yeah, like him saying that there's loads of development in Leeds and it's this new space, there's lots of people there and it's exciting. If I was a listener to that, I might be more, inclined to to go there and see what opportunities there are i can see why places like leeds and sorry to say this leeds because it's a it's a yorkshire rival but sheffield are getting a lot of attention right now because they're cities that have a lot to offer in terms of culture and they give you the um you know they've got bars they've got restaurants they've got nightlife but very quickly you are into staggeringly beautiful surroundings in a way that you don't get necessarily in Manchester or Birmingham or or, or London, and Man- Manchester's are quite a lot bigger. <laughs> no, they're they're bigger cities. They take longer to get in and out of. Yes, like, but I found out the other day about Birmingham. We have more parks than Paris. No, I, I I'm aware. How and you cool have lots is of that? canals and waterways, like yes. great. But <laughs> like Sheffield, for example, you would literally ten minutes out of the city, you're in the Peak District. Yeah, and I think with all of the universities there and you know, the development that they're trying to do around the tech space as well, you know, with the least digital festival that's going on, you can really tell that it is being developed there. So mm. yeah, there's definitely development, but it's such a personal thing, but I just thought it was interesting that he was saying, because I like cycling. And I was like, it has really changed in the way of why people are starting businesses where they are or, you know, they've chosen a location where they are. I like cycling and I, and I like it here. And it was like, oh, fair enough. It wasn't like I have to be in London to be successful. So no. just kind of being the, the done thing. So, yeah. Super interesting. Mm. Hannah, thank you very much for your time on this particular episode of the podcast. Gosh, was there like four or something? Or was there it- are four today. This is one of four. <laughs> So equally, because it is International Podcast Day, let us not forget. Oh my gosh, is it? I wonder who told me that. (laughs) Um, There are three more from Leeds. Fleet Marketing, a head partnership, uh, and Coders Guild. So three more episodes that you could choose to listen to. Why not listen to all four? Binge on them. Why not? Me and Akish will be talking absolute shit on some of the others. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) But there will be insightful interviews at the same time. Uh, But yeah, Hannah, thanks for your time. Thanks. I don't care. I'm not comfortable.